Hi, Poets House. My name is Lauren Camp. I am the Poet Laureate of New Mexico for the next couple of years. And I'm a poet in New Mexico. Uh, I've written five previous books and my sixth book is due out um, this summer. It's called An Eye in Each Square and I'll read from it in a little while. I'm really glad to be here and um, to get to share some poems um, that a poem I love by someone else and a couple of poems of my own. Thank you Poets House for everything you do for poetry. I've come into poetry sideways through side doors and I wish one of those doors had been the Poets House door. The poem that I chose to read is from Larry Levis. It's very difficult for me to choose a single poem to share under any circumstances. So I find that each time I get asked, I choose different poems from different people. Um, I read very widely and um, I take my influences from all over the place, all different styles and time periods. But Larry Levis has been a, a constant um, student of Philip Levine, whose work also inspires me, and then later a colleague of Levine's. So I picked a poem from the book Winter Stars, uh, an early book from Larry Levis, and um, the poem is called Decrescendo. I think part of what I like about Levis's poems are the, the narrative, but the circuitous nature of them, the tangents and um, the directions and redirections that let me see a place, an emotion, and then see it anew and see it from a different angle. Decrescendo. If there is only one world, it is this one. In my neighborhood, the ruby-helmeted woodpecker's line is all spondies and totally formal as it tattoos its instinct and solitude into a high sycamore, which keeps revising autumn until I will look out and something final will be there, a branch in winter, not even a self-portrait, just a thing. Still, it is strange to live alone, to feel something rise up out of the body against all that is, by law, falling and turning into the pointless beauty of calendars. Think of the one in the office closed for 43 summers in a novel by Faulkner. Think of unlocking it, of ducking your head slightly and going in. It is all pungent and lost, or it is all like the doomed singers, Cook and Redding, who raised their voices against the horn's implacable decrescendos and knew exactly what they were doing. And what they were doing was dangerous. The man on sax and the other on piano never had to argue their point, for their point was time itself, and all that one wished to say, even to close friends, one said beside that window. The trees turn, a woman passing on the street below turns up her collar against the cold. And if the music ends, the needle on the phonograph scrapes like someone raking leaves, briefly, across the sidewalk, and no one alone is particularly special. That is what musicians are for, to remind us of this, unless those singers die, one shot in a motel room by a woman who made a mistake, and one dead in a plane crash, an accident, which left a man on sax and another on piano with no one to back up, and hearing the news, one sat with his horn in a basement in Palo Alto, letting its violence go all the way up and annoying the neighbors until the police came and arrested him, who had, in fact, tears in his eyes. And the other, a white studio musician from LA, who went home and tried to cleave the keyboard with his hands until they bled and his friends came and called his wife 
and someone went out for bandages and more bourbon, hoping to fix up a little this world. Larry Levis. It's so nice to read poems aloud, other poems by other people. I spent years, 15 years doing a radio show for our local public radio station and reading poems aloud is part of how I learned what I liked in a poem and um, how I learned what was, what was too complicating. If I couldn't read it aloud, if I couldn't speak it, voice it, then I couldn't write my own poems that way. I'm going to turn to a couple of poems of my own um, from my newest book coming out, An Eye in Each Square, which, um, which is coming from River River Books this summer. The book itself began in 2017. The country was in a kind of turmoil. Um, we had a new president, new administration. Um, things were really nuts and disturbing and worrisome. And uh, my father at the same time was sort of plummeting into Alzheimer's disease. So there was, there was this turmoil inside and out um, and close to home in the personal and in the much wider world. And I began writing poems and the poems I wrote circled around the artist Agnes Martin, whose artwork is um, spacious and nearly empty. It's very quiet. Um, Agnes considered herself not a minimalist, though if you don't know the work, you might look at it and think that, but she thought of herself as a, an abstract expressionist. Her paintings were about something, and I guess I needed that something right then. So I wrote poems that were sort of in conversation with the space of her paintings and a bit with Agnes herself. Um, with her history, though she is was quite an enigma. She didn't like for people to know her too well, I don't think. So I'll read two, two poems from this new collection, An Eye in Each Square. The first is called, Agnes Repeated What Hurt. She had finally begun troubling the straws of her body to observe what she favored as refuge. The first voice told her she was lucky. The second was bulldozing. She made a choice to wash to faint traces. Nothing is bare if the utter inside has substance. Look, paper birch branches collide in wind. The cold points straight forward. Okay, the second poem I want to read is called Meticulous Answer. My mind keeps moving. The country is nearly at war with satisfaction, or could be. I want to set down my mind, a miniature lullaby. Watch the sloshing water, lost list, crisscrossed waves, a glass pane. One day shows me desire to keep out excitement. The next, I could suck up all wonder. Smoke ribs the sky. The sky doesn't stop. My mind must stop. I think of tomorrow or a problem of God, the rumor of danger, another sip of another descent. The bay breathes in and out every six hours. It summons abundance, which must be bewilder to lighten. Too much ending is happening to the earth. I hunker into days within days. Inward, in my cottage, I watch interviews that riddle her losses, how she leavened to unhurried empire. I scribble another parable at the edge of my notebook. In the sounding dim light, I look up to an eagle as it cracks clouds to a strewn line and between. Then the bird is hidden. The sky touches all sides. Details stop. Stopping stops. I might see nothing, but I am not lost. I have grown more to some one-time seam of wisdom. 